Today we're going to look at how the United States began to mobilize for war during World War II. Our learning objectives are to describe how the U.S. Armed Forces mobilized for war. We will explain the role that the U.S. industry and science played in mobilizing for the war, and we will explain how mobilization affected the nation's ideals of freedom. The U.S. Armed Forces Mobilize Once the United States entered the war, it had to mobilize or bring its forces into readiness. In 1940, the government had begun to increase military spending. This helped end the Great Depression. Thousands found work in factories making supplies for the military. Army Chief of Staff General George C. Marshall led the mobilization effort. In addition to the equipment and supplies, the United States needed soldiers. American women filled a variety of vital roles in the military. New military bases were needed to train and house soldiers. Finding Soldiers The government expanded the draft, which had been reinstated in 1940. Millions of young men volunteered. Some 16 million Americans entered the armed forces. 10,000 women joined the WAVES, a Navy program. 1,000 joined the WASP, an Air Force program and 150,000 served in the WAC, an Army program. Oveda Kulp Hobby led the WACs, and she was a colonel. Most uh, military bases were built in rural areas. The military bases transformed parts of the United States. California, Florida, and Texas became home to large numbers of soldiers. Troops needed proper equipment to fight World War II. Factories that produced consumer goods were converted to the production of military supplies. Roosevelt called for, for the production of new planes and tanks. War supplies had to be shipped overseas. Submarines took a terrible toll on American shipping. American shipyards turned out thousands of new vessels to replace those lost during the war. Henry Kaiser built the so-called Liberty ships using assembly line techniques. Wartime agencies regulated what factories produced, what prices they could charge, and how the nation's raw materials could be used. Produ producing supplies to fight the war required many workers. Government spending during the war created millions of new jobs. Technology played an important role in World War II. Factories needed workers at the same time men were leaving to join the armed forces. Women solved the problem. Millions began to work outside the home in industrial jobs. Working women of the war were represented by the symbolic figure known as Rosie the Riveter. Many workers joined labor unions and the government was concerned about strikes. The National War Labor Board was established in 1941 to help settle labor disputes. The Manhattan Project began a top-secret mission to build an atomic bomb. Physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer and other American scientists raced to develop this weapon ahead of the Germans. And here we see a picture of Rosie the Riveter. Once again, women worked in factories and economic power increased for women. Uh, this picture, this very famous picture, the We Can Do It poster, uh, which has really kind of become a symbol of female empowerment, um, was largely inspired by a female factory worker. At 17, a young factory worker named Geraldine Doyle unwittingly inspired J. Howard Miller's iconic We Can Do It poster, an image that later became a powerful symbol of American women's contributions during World War II and of female empowerment. More than four decades would go by before she learned that she had been, or that she had become, the face of Rosie the Riveter. Doyle died on December 26, 1910, in Lansing, Michigan, at the age of 86. And that is from History.com. Freedom at Home. African Americans in the military. Hundreds of thousands served during World War II. They broke down barriers that had long blocked their way and they continued to face discrimination. 
such as segregated units, for example. African Americans in the workforce found jobs in factories that had been unavailable to them before the war, but they still faced discrimination. A. Philip Randolph called for a march on Washington to protest their unfair treatment. Challenges for Hispanic Americans. Demand for farm labor led to the Bracero Program, which gave Mexican workers the chance to work in the United States. Tension over increasing numbers of Hispanic workers led to the Zoot Suit Riots in June of 1943. 